Hey, we're going to take a look at a problem involving geometric sequence. Um, it's important here that they tell us that we are working with a geometric sequence because geometric sequence we know we are multiplying by the same number over and over again where if it were arithmetic we would be adding. So that gives us a basis to work from because they left some holes in this problem. Um, so first of all, they want us to find a sub 7. What that means is the seventh number in this sequence is what they want us to find. Where a sub 1, so the first number in the sequence is 3, and a sub 3, the third number in the sequence is 12. So we have this sequence of numbers and we know the first one is 1, but we have a blank. We don't know what the second one is. We do know the third one is 12 and that's all we know. <laughs> it would be helpful to know what number we're multiplying by each time in order to create this sequence and you can use trial and error. You can try out numbers to see how you would get from 3 to a number here to 12 by multiplying by the same number each time. Or you can use algebra which is what I'm going to show you how to do. Okay, so coming back to a geometric sequence, we know that means multiplying by the same number each time. So we could theoretically say we have this number, we don't know what it is, let's call it x. Okay, We know that the first term is 3, so the second term would have to be 3 times this number x. So our second term then would be this 3x, which isn't pretty, but it's getting us somewhere. To get to the next term, you would have to multiply by x again. So the next term would be 3 times x times another x. What this does for us is it allows us to set up an equation because we know this term is supposed to be 12. We also know this term is 3 times our number times our number. So we can set up an equation. We know that 3 times this number times itself is equal to 12. We can use our algebra skills now because we know that x times x is x squared. Okay, So we know that we have 3x squared equals 12 and we can solve this equation to find our x or the number we're using in this geometric sequence. So let's do that. Well we have 3 times x squared so to solve we would have to divide both sides by 3 which gives me x squared equals 4. x squared, the opposite of that is a square root so to solve we're going to take the square root of both sides and anytime you take the square root to solve an equation you have to include plus or minus because we don't know if it was negative 2 times negative 2 that gave us positive 4 or positive 2 times positive 2 that gave us positive 4. So we get two answers, we get plus or minus 2. So that means our, G, our number that we're multiplying by could be 2 and it could be negative 2. Where they didn't specify and they gave us numbers that we wouldn't be able to tell because if it's negative you're going to get a, a positive, a negative, a positive, a negative. I will take either answer. So from here you can use 2 or negative 2, either one of those and I will take either of the answers you get in the end. Okay. What do we do with this information? Well, that just told us that for our sequence, we're multiplying by 2 each time. So for the first term, okay, we did, we had 3, but to get to the second term, we multiplied by 2. 3 times 2 is 6. For the third term, we multiply by 2 again, and 6 times 2 is 12. To get to the next term, we multiply by 2 again, and 2 times 12 is 24. So here's our first, second, third, fourth term. We want to find out what our seventh term is. So we just continue on. To get to the next term, 24 times 2 is 48. To get to the next term, 48 times 2 is 96. We're almost there. And to get to the seventh term, 96 times 2 is 192. So our answer is that the seventh term is 192. If you're curious what would have happened if we used negative 2, we still start with first term of 3, but if we multiply by negative 2, we get a negative 6. If we multiply that by negative 2, we get a positive 12. If we multiply that by negative 2, we get a negative 24, positive 48, negative 96, and a positive 192. So we end up with the same answer either way. 
if they had asked for the sixth term, we would have had opposite signs. But again, I will I will accept either of their answers, whether you se select to go the positive or the negative. The other thing that you could do after finding out what your x value is, what you're multiplying by, is you could write down what your geometric series looks like. We know we're starting with 3 and we're multiplying by 2 every time. So we could write this as 3 times 2 to the n minus 1. If you want to go this route, you can do this 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 way also. Okay? Why n minus 1? Well, that's because we want the first term to be 3. Okay, and if n is 1, our first term, that would give us a 0 here, which would leave us with just a 3 for our first term. If we don't put that minus 1, it starts us out on the second term, which we don't want. Okay, so the way you would use this is you would find the seventh term, you would just replace your n with 7, and that would be, give me 3 times 2 to the 7 minus 1, or 3 times 2 to the 6th. 2 to the 6th power is 64 times 3 is 192. Okay, so either way you can do it this way or this way. Doesn't matter to me, whichever makes the most sense to you or is easiest for you. Okay, I'm going to go through one more if you want to pause and try it on your own and then come back and check your answer, that's fine. Or if you want to follow along, that is fine as well. So, we get started. We want to find a sub 5, so the fifth term in a geometric sequence, again very important that they told us that so that we know we're using multiplication and not addition here. And <clears throat> my first term, a sub 1 is 4, my third term is 100. So again we have this mystery blank. We go 4, some number for our second term, and then we go to 100. And then we would carry on from there. Once again, geometric means multiplying by the same number over and over again. So we can say our number is x. That would mean the second term would be 4 times that x. And the third term, we would multiply by x once again. So 100 should be the same as 4 times x times x, where x is our number we're multiplying by each time to get the next number in the sequence. Set up your equation and solve for x. x times x means x squared. We would then divide both sides by 4 to isolate the x. And now all we have left is this squared that we need to take care of and the opposite of squaring is square root. So we take the square root of both sides and we remember our plus or minus. The square root of 25 is 5. So we know that our number that we're multiplying by each time we call it the common ratio, is either 5 or negative 5. So again, if you want to just write out the terms, first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, that's what they wanted us to go to this time. The first term is 4. The second term would be 4 times 5, which is 20. To get the next one, go times 5 again. 20 times 5 is 100. 100 times 5 is 500 and 500 times 5 is 2,500. So the fifth term in this sequence that starts with 4 has a third term of 100 is 2,500. Again, you could use negative 5 as well. I will accept either of your answers that you come up with. That would give us 4. 4 times negative 5 is a negative 20, then a positive 100, a negative 500, and a positive 2,500. So either way, our fifth term is 2,500. Okay? You can also, if you did it this way, I'll go ahead and show you what it looks like so you can check, um, use the geometric formula. So we have 4 as our first term and we're multiplying by 5 each time. Again, I'm going to use n minus 1 so that on that first term we get a 0 here. Fifth term, I would replace my n with a 5, so I have 4 times 5 to the 5 minus 1 power, which is 5 to the 4th power. That gives me 4 times 625. My writing's not coming out real clear right now. And 4 times 625 is 2,500. So again, either way, 
we still get 2,500 for our answer.